Good evening, everyone. My name is Clive. I'm back with some more creepypastas. Today I'm going to read one of the more well-known gaming creepypastas known as Pokemon Black. Now I'm sure you're all thinking, oh, I've heard this a million times before, but I'm just going to read it because, well, it's here on my screen and I feel like it. So, screw you. Anyways, I stumbled on this unsettling story of an obscure Pokemon bootleg slash art hack that I thought might be neat to share on here. I think this originated from 4chan, so I've no idea if this hack actually exists. It probably doesn't, but it's still a great concept. I'm what you could call a collector of bootleg Pokemon games. A Pokemon Diamond and Jade, Chaos Black, etc. It's amazing the frequency which uh, you can find them at pawn shops, Goodwill, flea markets, and such. They're generally fun, even if they're unplayable, which they are often. Mistranslations and poor quality make them unintentionally humorous, actually. I've been able to find most of the ones that I've played online, but there's one that I haven't seen any mention of. I bought it at a flea market about five years ago. Here's a picture of the cartridge, in case anyone recognizes it. Unfortunately, when I moved two years ago, I lost the game. So I can't pr provide you with screen caps. Sorry. The game started with the familiar Nidorino and Gengar intro of Red and Blue version. However, the press start screen had been altered. Red was there, but the Pokémon did not cycle through. It also said Black version under the Pokémon logo. Upon selecting New Game, the game started the Professor Oak speech, and it quickly became evident that the game was essentially Pokemon Red version. After selecting your starter, if you looked at your Pokemon, you had in addition to Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle, another Pokemon, Ghost. The Pokemon was level 1. It had the sprite of the ghosts that, were, that are encountered in Lavender Tower before obtaining the Self Scope. It had one attack, Curse. I know that there is a real move named Curse, but the attack didn't exist in Generation 1, so it appears it was hacked in. Defending Pokémon were unable to attack Ghost. It would only say they were too scared to move. When the move Curse was used in battle, the screen would cut to black. The cry of the defending Pokémon would be heard but it was distorted, played at a much lower pitch than normal. The battle screen would then reappear, and the defending Pokémon would be gone. If used in a battle against a trainer, when the Pokéballs representing their Pokémon would appear in the corner, they would have one fewer Pokéball. The implication that was that the Pokémon died. What's even stranger is that after defeating a trainer, and seeing Red received such and such for winning, the battle commands would appear again. If you selected Run, the battle would end as it normally does. You could also select Curse. If you did, upon returning to the overworld, the trainer's sprite would be gone. After leaving and re-entering the area, the spot where the trainer had been would be replaced with a tombstone like the ones at Lavender Tower. The move Curse was not usable in all instances. It would fail against Coast ghost Pokemon. It would also fail if you used it against trainers that you would have to face again, such as your rival or Giovanni. It was usable in your final battle against them, though. I figured this was the gimmick of the game, allowing you to use the previously uncapturable ghosts. And because Curse made the game so easy, I essentially used it throughout the whole adventure. The game changed quite a bit after defeating the Elite Four. After viewing the Hall of Fame, which consisted of Ghost and a couple of very underleveled Pokémon, the screen cut to black. A box appeared with the words, Many Years Later. It then cut to Lavender Tower. An old man was standing looking at tombstones. You then realize this man was your character. The man moved at only half of your normal walking speed. You no longer had any Pokémon with you. Not even Ghost, who up to this point had been impossible to remove from your party, through depositing in the PC. The overworld was entirely empty. There were no people at all. There were still the tombstones of the trainers that you used Curse on, however. 
You could go pretty much anywhere in the wor overworld at this point, though your movement was limited by the fact that you had no Pokémon to use HMs. And regardless of where you went, the music of Lavender Town continued on an infinite loop. After wandering for a while, I found that if you go through Diglett's Cave, one of the cuttable bushes that normally blocks the path on the other side is no longer there, allowing you to advance and return to Pallet Town. Upon entering your house and going to the exact tile where you start the game, the screen would cut to black. Then a sprite of Caterpie appeared. It was replaced by a Weedle, and then a Pidgey. I soon realized, as the Pokémon progressed from Rattatata to Blastoise, that these were all of the Pokémon that I had used Curse on. After the end of my rival's team, a youngster appeared, and then a bug catcher. These were the trainers I had cursed. Throughout the sequence, the Lavender Town music was playing, but it was slowly decreasing in pitch. By the time your rival appeared on screen, it was little more than a demonic rumble. Another cut to black. A few moments later, the battle screen suddenly appeared. Your trainer sprite was now that of an old man, the same one as the one who teaches you how to catch Pokemon in Viridian City. Ghost appeared on the other side, along with the words, Ghost wants to fight. You couldn't use items, and you had no Pokemon. If you tried to run, you couldn't escape. The only option was fight. Using fight would immediately cause you to use struggle, which didn't affect Ghost, but did chip off a bit of your own hit points. When it was Ghost's turn to attack, it would simply say dot dot dot. Eventually, when your HP reached a critical point, Ghost would finally use Curse. The screen cut to black a final time. Regardless of the bu buttons you pressed, you were permanently stuck in this black screen. At this point, the only thing you could do was turn off the Game Boy. When you played again, New Game was the only option. The game had erased the file. I played through this hack game many, many times, and every time the game ended with this sequence. Several times I didn't use Ghost at all, though he was impossible to remove from the party. In these cases, it, didn't, it did not show any Pokémon or trainers and simply cut to the climactic battle with Ghost. I'm not sure what motives were behind the creator of this hack. It wasn't widely distributed, so it was presumably, presumably not for monetary gain. It was very well done for a bootleg. It seems he was trying to convey a message, though it seems I am the sole receiver of this message. I'm not entirely sure what it was. The inevitability of death? The pointlessness of it? Perhaps he was simply trying to morbidly inject death and darkness into a child uh, children's game. Regardless, this children's game has made me think, and it has made me cry. Well, that was... eh. Honestly, while a lot of people seem to like this stuff or find it really, really eerie or creepy, I really don't see it. Then again, I'm also kind of used to the horror and terror and creepy, uh, creepy genres. So, yeah. Anyways, that's all for today, and I'd like to thank you for watching. If you liked it, please comment in, uh, comment below, and let me know what else you'd like me to, uh, read off. Narrate, read, whatever. So, I guess I'll see you another time. Have a good one.